Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. My name is Bandrew, and I'm super high energy today. And today, we are reviewing a modern U47 style microphone. That microphone is the Telefunken TF47, which is a multi pattern tube condenser microphone. If you are interested in this mic, it will cost you around $1,900. Like always, I'll throw some links in the description down below. Also, for the majority of this review, I'm going to be running the microphone into the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen 24-bit 48 kilohertz gain set at around 230. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now, let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the box. First off, everything comes in this really nice zippered storage box. You'll of course get the microphone, a shock mount, a standard firm hard mount, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a couple of extra bands for the shock mount in case you lose one, a cable to connect the microphone to the power supply, the power supply itself as well as the cable to power the power supply, and a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I really don't have any complaints about this thing. It has an all metal body as well as a metal mesh grill which has no give to it. As we move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches. On the bottom, you will find the 7 pin XLR port. Then when we look at the actual power supply, it is all metal. The XLR ports are pretty good with no wobble outside of the ordinary. You have a stepped knob for the polar pattern selection switch and you have a power switch which glows orange when it's on. And then if it matters to you, this microphone I believe is only labeled assembled in the US. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid, omnidirectional and figure eight polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of approximately negative 33 dB, a max SPL of 125 dB, an EIN of only 10 dBA, an impedance of 300 ohms. This uses the BV8 transformer and the tube is a 5840W. Now I am on the cardioid polar pattern moving around to 90 degrees so you can hear the off axis rejection and coloration continuing around the microphone to 180 degrees. This is the rear continuing to the second 90 degree angle. Here we are and then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Now we are on the omnidirectional pattern moving around to 90 degrees, continuing around to 180 degrees. There shouldn't be too much change as we move around the microphone, continuing to the second 90 degree angle. Here we are, and then rotating and ending at the front of the mic. And finally, we are on the figure eight pattern moving around to 90 degrees, which is the first dead and null area, continuing around to the rear lobe of sensitivity. Here you go. And then rotating around to the second dead area. Here it is. And then finally rotating and ending at the front of the mic. I think it's been over a month since I've done this test, so I'm a little out of practice, but let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. I got it right. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about three inches away from the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about one foot away from the microphone, about two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the Telefunken TF47. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the elite gaming folk, now I am typing on the sad W and spacebar key. Now here is how this microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room while the camera is completely blown out because the settings don't work on my computer anymore. And now in order to test how effective the provided shock mount is, I'm going to go ahead and tap on my desk to see how much of that it rejects. 
and then I will tap on the boom arm. And now because I'm annoying and I want to be thorough, I'm going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. And then... Now because I know a lot of people will be looking to use this microphone with an outboard preamp, I wanted to include a quick spoken word sample running between two higher end outboard preamps, one being the Warm Audio WA73 EQ, the second being the Universal Audio LA610 Mark II. The EQ and the compressor on both of them are bypass, so it will just be the raw preamps and their impact on the mic. This is a very quick audio sample running through a microphone splitter into both preamps so we can hear the difference in tone between the two pre's. This is a very quick audio sample running through a microphone splitter into both preamps so we can hear the difference in tone between the two pre's. And here is another short audio sample that I will play two times so you can hear the exact same performance through two separate pre's. And here is another short audio sample that I will play two times so you can hear the exact same performance through two separate pre's. Now like we always do, we're going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a couple of other microphones that are on the market so we can see what the sound differences are and see how it stacks up against the competition. We'll start on the microphone that we're reviewing, and this is the Telefunken TF47, six inches off, running into the Universal Audio X8, gain set at 33 dB, and here is how this sounds on the cardioid polar pattern. Let's jump to the first mic. First up, we are on one of the most popular microphones out there, the Audio-Technica AT2020, cardioid only condenser microphone that goes for about $100. I am six inches off of this thing, Gain is set at 33 dB on the X8, and here is how it sounds. Let's jump back and do more comparisons. Back again on the TF47, absolutely nothing has changed. Here's how it sounds, let's jump to another one. Now we're on one of my favorite microphones, the Rode NT1. This is another cardioid only condenser microphone. This costs around $270, six inches off, gain at 33 dB. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post, and that is how it sounds. Let's jump back to the 47. If you couldn't have guessed, we are back on the TF47 again, so you can hear how it sounds, a bit of a palate cleanser. There you go, next mic. Now we are on the Shure KSM32, another cardioid-only condenser microphone. This goes for about $500-ish. I am 6 inches off, my gain is still at 33 dB, and here is how this sounds compared to the 47. Let's do more. I think you've picked up on the pattern. We're back on the TF47 again. Here's how it sounds. Let's do another comparison. Now we are on the Soyuz or Soyuz SU023 bomblet. This is another cardioid only condenser microphone. It costs around $1,200. Six inches off, gain still at 33%. 33 dB, not percent. And here is how it sounds. Let's do a couple more because we got more to do. I don't know how many of these we're going to do, but this is the TF-47 again. Here is how it sounds. Let's do another one. Now we are on the brother or the sister or the sibling of the TF-47. This is the Telefunken TF-51. This goes for $1,900 as well. This is going to be much brighter, less mid-forward, and more of that classic Austrian sound going for that Elam 251 sound, which is just amazing. Cardioid mode, six inches off, and here is how it compares to the more mid-forward, more German-sounding microphone. There you go. Let's do more. All right, we have a couple more to go, but first up, palate cleanser time as I tap on the microphone. TF-47 is what you're listening to. Let's listen to a different one now. Now we are on the Lewitt LCT 1040, which goes for about $3,500. I am six inches off. My gain is still at 33 dB. I am set to 100% tube with the warm voicing and no high pass filter. 
And here is how this compares to the Telefunken TF-47, 1040 versus 47. 1087? I don't know. What am I saying? Next comparison mic thing. This next one is the second to last microphone, if I'm not mistaken. But first up, TF-47, let's jump to the penultimate microphone. Now we are on the Neumann U87AI, which goes for about $3,700. And yes, that is an increase in price. Inflation, am I right? I am on the cardioid polar pattern, six inches away, gain set at 33 dB still. And this is how it sounds. I know, this is the penultimate microphone. What could the final microphone be? The final mic is always the U87AI. What will it be? We may never know. Let's do it. The final microphone, not anything weird, okay? Weirdo? Wow, the second to last microphone was the U87AI. What could possibly be the final microphone? First up, Telefunken TF47 palate cleanser time. Nothing has changed. Six inches, same gain setting. Cardioid mode. Final microphone. And I imagine all of you were able to guess what the final microphone was going to be. This is the Neumann U67 reissue, which now goes for $7,500. It's increased in price by $300 since I last used it. I guess they were lying when they said inflation wasn't a thing. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, I am six inches off, cardioid polar pattern, and here is how one of the greatest tube condenser microphone sounds compared to one that is going for a similar sound to a different tube microphone, classic tube microphone. TF-47 is going for a U-47 style sound, if you didn't get what I was trying to say. Okay, those are the comparisons. Let's jump to the music test. <laughs> Since you have seen me smile I don't know where I've been But I've been hiding for a while I haven't been depressed I just needed a break From YouTube now Ow. Hey, I hit it <laughs> Sounds so bad though Yeah, I just needed a break I was totally burned out Still probably am just a little bit But I need to get back into the swing of things So here we are outro time. All right, I don't have a U47 to compare this microphone against because I don't have $10,000, but on its own for a mid-forward microphone, I think this thing sounds pretty darn good. And first up, as far as pros, it has to be the self-noise on this thing. For a tube microphone, having a self-noise of 10 dBA is absolutely outstanding. It's very rare that you find tube mics that are not noisy because tubes are are significantly noisier than solid state microphones. This is on par with a lot of solid state microphones and beats out a lot of solid state microphones and that's just great. Also, I found all of the polar patterns very usable. None of them were funky sounding. None of them were offensive sounding. I would be more than happy using any of them. Also, on the note of polar patterns, the off-axis coloration on this thing is pretty nice and very inoffensive. That means if you have reflections coming in from the side, it's not going to sound funky. It's not going to have any weird tonality to it, which is going to be a big benefit if you are in more of a reverberant room. 
And the last pro has to be the clarity in the midsection of this microphone. It gives you that mid forward sound, but it doesn't come across overly nasally or overly boosted. It just has this really clear and detailed midsection, which is really hard to come by. And then as far as cons, I've actually had people leave angry comments because I point this out in my videos, but the resonance on this is going to be a con for me. It's not the worst that I've heard. It doesn't ring like a bell, but when I was testing the reverb, I did the three claps, and on the third one, there was a little bit of a ding, so I want to point it out. It is there, and if you tap it with something sharp or hard, it will create that little bit of a ringing sound. And the second con here is less of a con and more of an FYI. The background noise rejection of this microphone isn't that great. It lets in a lot of room tone. It lets in a lot of reverb. So if you have a reflective surface, you need to be aware of it and make sure that you're not getting any comb filtering with your audio. So just be acutely aware of where the microphone is being placed because it doesn't do the best at rejecting that kind of sound. And now to dive a little bit deeper, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I think it offers a really great sound. I did find it a touch boxy in the low mids. That's easy to fix with a little bit of EQ, but the main standout here, which I will be saying a lot, is the mid forward sound. You just get this really punchy, really aggressive sound that is just going to work really well in a full mix. The top end maintains a lot of detail and articulation, but it doesn't come across as sizzly. I would say the top end, the treble, gets a little bit too punchy at times, but you could play around with the mic placement and avoid that completely. And overall, on the electric guitar, I really enjoyed it. Then on the acoustic guitar, I do prefer more trebly and airy microphones, but overall I think it is workable. It gives you a very robust low and low midsection, then you get that really punchy and forward midsection. Not going to be my favorite for acoustic, but if you are looking for that sound, it does it really well. And then in the treble and air frequencies, it is all still there. You're not losing out on it. It's not rolled off, but it doesn't come across as too lively or open. So if you're looking for a really chimey and open sounding microphone for your acoustic, this isn't really offering that. Next up for singing, I really enjoy how this thing sounds. I think it might be my favorite application. I have used it on a couple of songs over the last year or two and really enjoyed the outcome from those. But as far as the sound goes, in the low and low mids, it does give you more of a robust sound. Pretty easy to EQ that out if you don't want that. But the main characteristic of this microphone is the mid forwardness. The thing that I really like about it though is although it is mid forward, I don't think it comes across too nasally. I don't think it comes across too over boosted. And the midsection is just incredibly clear and detailed. And as I said, I have found that very difficult to come across. I don't find that often when you get this really clear and detailed midsection. Typically, you get very detailed top ends. You don't typically get that detailed and articulate midsection. But as far as the top end, it is all still there. You're still getting treble and air but it's not a bright microphone, it is not an open microphone, it is not a modern sounding microphone, it is more of that vintage MIDI kind of sound. If that's what you're going for for singing vocals, I think it sounds outstanding. And finally for spoken word, I have to say it's not my favorite sounding microphone for this application, but I do think it can work, especially if you are going for that more vintage for that more mid forward sound. The low mids on this microphone are very robust and full, and if you get right on top of it and exaggerate that proximity effect, I wouldn't say it gives you the voice of God because I think that exaggeration is a bit too high into the low mids, but I think it gives you this really buttery and warm sound, which is just awesome. As I've mentioned a couple of times already, the mid forwardness is the main selling point of this microphone, but the thing I love about it the most is the clarity of the mids, the detail and the articulation of the mids. Then when you get to the treble and air, it is all still there. It's not rolled off, it's not dark, 
but I wouldn't classify this as a bright microphone. I wouldn't classify it as a sibilant microphone. Just a really nice sounding mid forward mic if that's what you're going for. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Telefunken TF47? For some people, absolutely I would. First, if you are looking for a U47, a Telefunken U47, a Neumann U47, I don't think you should buy this microphone because a U47, it is not. I don't have a U47, so I can't say that for certain, but I don't think Telefunken is going to sell the U47 for $10,000 and then sell a microphone that sounds exactly the same for a fifth the price. So if you are looking at this microphone thinking you're going to spend $2,000 and get the same performance as Telefunken's $10,000 microphone, stop. That's not going to be the case. However, if you have been looking for a multi-pattern tube condenser microphone with that mid-forward sound, with that clarity in the midsection, then I would absolutely recommend it because I don't see any deal breakers here. I think it sounds outstanding. The low self noise is really great. The polar patterns all sound really usable to me. Nothing really falls short here except maybe that resonance but that's going to be a pretty small issue in the grand scheme of things all right that's going to wrap up for today i would love to hear from you in the comments down below which of the microphones in the comparison was your favorite and do you think the tf47 is worth the price tag that they have on it because that's a lot of money that's a lot of damage if you did find this video fun interesting or helpful Go ahead and give me a thumbs up hated it big old thumbs down want more videos subscribe do all that stuff i appreciate you and if you want to be one of these amazing people over here, what was that? You can do so by clicking the join button or going to patreon.com slash podcastage and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. Sorry for missing two weeks. I just needed a break. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you next week. I love you. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.